In one section of this concrete jungle, a revolution in construction is quietly underway. The key word is wood. By around 2030, the area surrounding Tokyo Station is set to see a number of high-rises transformed into wooden buildings. We asked people on the street about their image of wooden buildings. There's a sense of life. They seem vulnerable to earthquakes. I'm scared about fires the most. There are now moves to apply technology to combat risks from earthquakes and fires and open up new possibilities for the construction industry. We look at what's happening on the ground. A building with a view of Osaka Castle. In fact, the fourth to eighth floors are made with wood. This building is named Miyakojima Project. It was built by a local construction company. This section looks like it's almost finished. Overseeing the building's design is Takao Nishizawa. He hopes to expand such wooden buildings nationwide. I think we can use this method for the bedrooms. We want to construct buildings using an earthquake-resistant design that are also fire-resistant within the laws of Japan, which are among the toughest in the world. This itself is quite a big challenge. We want to combine various know-how and promote construction methods that can be utilized by small companies and mid-sized and smaller general contractors. Let's have a look at the fourth floor. What kind of technology is being used? In November last year, Mr. Nishizawa showed us a site where the pillars and beams were still exposed. In terms of the structure, we're combining these pillars and beams with braces to construct an earthquake-resistant building. For these braces, as well as the sections where the pillars and beams are joined together, we insert wood into the steel plates, fix them with pins, and integrate everything. These are the kinds of techniques being used now. While the pillars and beams are wooden, they're also said to be fire resistant. By layering these reinforced plasterboards around the wood, we create a guard called a refractory covering. In that way, we can build a fire resistant structure. These pillars have passed rigorous fire resistance tests. We visited the testing site to learn about their capabilities. A key requirement for the pillars is that they prevent buildings from toppling over, not just during, but also after a fire. Three, two, one, start. In a three-hour fire resistance test, the temperature inside the furnace rises to more than 1,000 degrees Celsius. Additionally, pressure is applied from the top and the bottom to measure the warping of pillars under extreme heat. After a certain amount of time has passed, the pillar is taken out of the test furnace and the plasterboard removed. There are no visible burn marks. If it passes the three-hour fire resistance test, it can legally be used on a 100-floor high-rise building.
While still rare, wooden buildings are found in some surprising places. This is a home exhibition center in Kawasaki City. This five-floor building was constructed by home builder AQ Group. Partnering with a research lab of the University of Tokyo, they say they spent more than 10 years to independently develop a construction method for buildings to withstand an intensity 7 earthquake. Why is a home builder constructing wooden buildings? With the shrinking number of households and population, we forecast a sharp decline in housing starts. Given this, we see a new market. According to our estimates, the market for single-story to five-story reinforced concrete buildings will exceed $100 billion. And we believe it's essential for us to address that market with wooden buildings. AQ Group's new headquarters building was completed at the end of March. This eight-floor building is actually made with wood. Symbolizing this building is this wall. The fire-resistant plywood walls used in typical homes are made thicker with numerous nails hammered in. In that sense, it's a universal technology and the walls can be constructed by any small builder. In Japan, where most homes are wooden, wood is the most commonly used construction material. At a news conference unveiling the company's new headquarters, President Toshia Miyazawa emphasized the technological strengths of Japan in wooden construction. As you know, we have shrines, and in the past, castles that were eight stories high. If you're building up to an eight-floor structure covering about 3,000 square meters, we felt it would be possible to do that without anything special. That's why we took on the challenge. Major general contractors are also starting to construct high-rise wooden buildings. Two years ago, Obayashi Corporation completed an 11-4 training facility in Yokohama. At 44 meters, it's currently the tallest wooden high-rise in Japan. A manager at Obayashi emphasizes a certain advantage. This building uses 1,900 cubic meters of wood. That means a carbon dioxide fixation of 1,650 tons. What exactly does that mean? Trees that are the source of lumber carry out photosynthesis and therefore absorb plenty of carbon dioxide. Buildings using a large amount of wood are what could be called a carbon storehouse. In regards to being environmentally friendly, a wooden structure is extremely effective, but the cost is higher. This is especially true overseas, but companies that aren't environmentally friendly are being weeded out. So for companies doing business globally in particular, even if they invest money in environmental initiatives, they can get a commensurate return. The home and building sector now accounts for a third of total carbon dioxide emissions and solutions are urgently needed. With moves toward a carbon-free society, the construction industry expects demand for wooden high-rises to continue growing. Amid this, Obayashi is making efforts to use domestic lumber in constructing wooden high-rises. The weak yen has pushed up the cost of imported lumber. Domestic lumber is also less exposed to geopolitical risks, 
providing a sense of security from a supply standpoint as well. In 2023, they acquired major lumber mill Cypress Sunadaya. This factory is equipped with cutting edge machinery. Raw domestic timber is read by a 3D scanner and efficiently processed without waste at a speed of 15 logs per minute. The production line uses European machinery. We can process this volume with just two people, so productivity per person is exceptionally high. Compared to conventional lumber mills in Japan and even our capabilities in the past, productivity per person has increased by 4.5 times. That makes it possible to lower our manufacturing costs. This factory specializes in panels called CLT that are used for the walls and floors of wooden buildings. Ours is as wide as three meters and up to 12 meters long. By combining them vertically and horizontally at 90 degree angles, we can make extremely wide and long wooden CLT panels. And by layering several of them on top of each other, you get an exceptionally strong wooden wall. That's a key characteristic of CLT. But won't the felling of such large number of trees lead to environmental destruction? We spoke to an expert on wooden construction. Currently, trees that were planted after World War II have reached 50 or 60 years in age, making them perfect for use as construction materials. It's essential to coordinate or adjust the mountain cycle and the cycle of wooden construction in the cities. To maintain healthy forests, thinning and planting are indispensable. Using domestic wood is seen as contributing to the protection of Japanese forests. Many wooden buildings will be constructed by about 2030. When that happens, it'll be a question of whether we actually want them or don't want them. <laughs> We're fast approaching that crucial moment. There's a rush of projects to construct wooden buildings in Tokyo. In Shibuya, Marui is in the midst of remaking its facility into a wooden nine-floor fashion building to be opened in 2026. I've never seen a wooding building, so it seems like something new. Sounds great. I'm looking forward to it. When is it going to be? 2026. That far ahead? Two years? In Maranochi, a 100-meter tall office building is slated to make its debut in 2028. What's more? Another company has announced it will develop technologies to construct a 70-floor, 350-meter-tall skyscraper by 2041. With two-thirds of the country covered by forests, Japan boasts the world's oldest standing wooden structure, Horyoji Temple's five-storied Goju Noto Pagoda. By using its plentiful forest resources, Japan may soon see its cities dotted by big wooden buildings.